Welcome back to Campus Countdown. I'm your host, Emily Sturge, and today we'll be covering Florida universities are being required to report public funds used for gender treatments. Universities have lowered expectations for pandemic era students and investigations into foreign influence in higher education have been reignited. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, Florida state colleges and universities are being required to report public funds used to treat gender dysphoria. This information was released in a newly published memo from the Office of Governor Ron DeSantis. The memo defines gender reassignment treatment and the treatment it involves, including puberty blockers, hormones, and any other medical procedures such as surgery. The governor's office requests the number of individuals diagnosed under gender identity disorders and their prescribed treatments. In addition to requesting the number and age brackets of patients prescribed puberty blockers and hormones, the governor's office is requesting the same information of patients prescribed top and or bottom surgeries as treatments. State universities and colleges must also provide statistics related to the length of time patients received behavioral health services prior to their first sex reassignment treatment. The memo clearly indicates that the governor's office is only interested in statistical information and all personally identifying health information of patients should be removed from the reports. This request is only applicable to student health services at public colleges and universities which utilize state funds. Campus Reform received the following statement from Deputy Press Secretary Jeremy Redford. We are committed to fully understanding the amount of public funding that is going towards such non-academic pursuits to best assess how to get our colleges and universities refocused on education and truth. Next up, we have special guest William Biagini. Biagini is a senior correspondent for campus reform and a student at Florida State University. I'm excited to announce that Biagini will be taking over as my co-host of Campus Countdown. Check back next week to see him host the show. In our second story this week, universities are lowering expectations for pandemic era students. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent William Biagini. As students recover from a, quote, hangover from virtual high school, some Pittsburgh area universities are responding with shorter tests and looser policies around attendance and deadlines. Recent interviews with students and instructors from Point Park University, the University of Pittsburgh, and other Pittsburgh universities reveal that some colleges and universities responded to the pandemic by lowering expectations. Students experienced learning losses from virtual classes and, as Campus Reform has reported, declining mental health. To meet their needs, instructors are continuing the practices that students have become accustomed to during high school and reducing their demands. The interviewed professors reported that their students request flexibility in their assignments and have difficulty meeting deadlines and, quote, staying on top of coursework because teachers actively helped them in high school. One statistics professor said that he even has to teach basic math skills to his students. While some Pittsburgh professors have responded with extra tutoring sessions and supplemental modules, others are redesigning their courses. In the math department at the University of Pittsburgh, Professor Jeffrey Wheeler has seen an unsettling lack of engagement among students since the pandemic. Wheeler, who has taught the math classes since the fall of 1990, said professors have shortened exams in the university's freshman calculus classes as a result. Additionally, at Chatham University, attendance and deadline policies have yet to be reinstated that were dropped during the pandemic. An associate dean cited mental health concerns such as performance anxiety. Jonathan Malizik, a professor at Southern Methodist University, said that, Quote, the problem isn't only that students learn poorly online, it's also that when they go through a year or more of remote classes, they developed habits that harm their ability to learn offline too, end quote. Ultimately, the pandemic has caused students to develop bad learning habits, and some colleges are now catering to these bad habits by reducing their expectations. Back to you, Emily. 
Thanks, William. In our top story this week, Representative Virginia Fox reignites Trump-era investigations into foreign influence in higher education. A recent announcement from Representative Fox, the new chairwoman of the Education and Workforce Committee, said, During the first two years of the Biden administration, agencies have failed to comply fully with congressional oversight letters. Soon after President Biden came into office, he dropped investigations into multiple universities, which allegedly failed to report foreign gifts, contracts, and any connections with Beijing funding to the Department of Education. Investigations into the matter started in August 2020, when House Republicans sent a letter to six universities demanding answers about unreported foreign gifts and donations. Representative Fox, Representative James Comer, and Representative Jim Jordan sent letters to the University of Chicago, the University of Delaware, Harvard University, New York University, the University of Pennsylvania, and Yale University. The letter stated that the Department of Education has uncovered over $6.5 billion worth of previously unreported foreign donations to United States institutes of higher education. Within one year, the Biden administration had stalled the probe into universities' foreign gifts. Representative Fox is continuing to work to unveil reported funds. She wrote in her press release, Under the Biden administration, federal agencies were empowered to conduct illegal and sometimes dangerous activity such as targeting parents or promoting brazen union activism. In the majority, House Republicans will not allow this administration to weaponize agencies against the people they are meant to serve. Now it's time for the Woke Tweet of the Week. As the spring semester is now in full swing, students are back on college campuses and new courses have begun. With each new semester, it seems that college courses have become more and more woke. Back in September 2022, UC Berkeley reported in a press release that the university revamped 10 courses to incorporate inclusive and anti-racist approaches. Now we are seeing that these courses have actually made their way into the classroom. What's crazy about these courses is that they are in the departments of environmental science, biology, nutrition, and toxicology. In other words, Students who are taking biology courses are actually getting a crash course in leftism and how to be an anti-racist. This week's Woke Tweet says, Berkeley has revamped its biology curriculum, turning courses in three departments into propaganda mills. Every minute devoted to other ways of knowing and similar ideological diversions is a minute less of biology you can learn. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.